Hello, today we'll be learning about basic trigonometry. So basically trigonometry is a study of triangles. Um, there's a lot of parts to trigonometry, but for today we're going to be focusing on right triangles. So we have two right triangles here. We're going to be focusing on naming the sides because that's very important. So if you remember back from geometry, you have two different types of sides. You have the legs and you have the hypotenuse. <clears throat> the hypotenuse is going to be the longest side of the right triangle. Uh, it can also be found by looking at the right angle and it will always be the side across from it. So in this example, BC or the one with a 5 is your hypotenuse. So I'm going to write that. So if you look at the other triangle next to it, DF is going to be your hypotenuse which measures 10. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write hypotenuse on it. Uh, the other two sides are the legs, but you do have to differentiate between the two legs. And in order for you to do that, you use an angle uh, as reference uh, to name the legs. So the other names for the two legs are going to be the opposite leg and the adjacent leg. So to find the opposite leg, again, we're going to use an angle as a reference. So in this case, we're going to use angle C, and I put a theta to represent the angle measurement. So across from that angle, we're always going to have our opposite. <clears throat> and then the other one is right next to it, so also called the adjacent. So now we have all three names. Uh, these two names are going to be switched around based on your angle of reference. So if I put my theta here, right, then this becomes my opposite, and then this becomes my adjacent. So keep that in mind. Those are going to be switched around. When we look at the one on the right, again, we already have the hypotenuse that measures 10. Now our theta is here, so across from that angle, we will have our opposite, and then next to it, we'll have our adjacent. Why is that important? Well, because we're going to be writing trigonometric ratios. We do have three of them. The first one says that the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The second one says that the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the third one says that the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So you can see a picture here. On this case, we're using A as a reference angle. So again, we will put the data here, right? Across from it will be our opposite. Next to it will be our adjacent. Hypotenuse, again, can be found across the right angle, right? Or the longest one if you do have some measurements. So pretty easy to do. You can use the trigonometric ratios to find the angles. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to name all three sides. So I know my right angle is here. Right across from it will be my hypotenuse. So that's what I'm going to put. My theta goes with angle A, right? So across from that is going to be my opposite, the one with the measurement of 12. And then next to it is going to be my adjacent or the last one that I'm looking for. There is a shortcut to remember all three trigonometric ratios. Uh, so I'm going to write it here. So ka toa. Remember each one of them has three letters. The first one is a trig ratio. And then the other two are two of the sides, whether it's adjacent, opposite, or hypotenuse. So I'm going to focus on the ones that were given to me. So I was given the hypotenuse, and I was given the opposite. So I'm going to look to see which of the three trigonometric ratios has opposite and hypotenuse, right? So we know it's going to be the one with the S representing the sine function. So I'm going to write sine. I don't know how big the angle is, right? They didn't give it to me, they gave me a theta. So I'm gonna write sine of theta. That's what I'm looking for. Equals to the opposite, the order in which to put the matters. The first letter always goes on top, and the second letter goes divided by that one because we're talking about a ratio. So it's gonna be 12 over 13. Once we do that, we can use our calculator to solve. The only way we can get rid of the sine is with an inverse sine. So if I do inverse sine on both sides, I get inverse sine of sine of theta equals 
inverse sine. So the inverse sine, you will be see it represented by a negative one as an exponent, kind of. The inverse sine and the sine will cancel each other out. That's the only way you can get rid of trig functions by using the inverse of the same one, leaving you just a theta equals the inverse sine of 12 over 13. In order for you to be able to do this, you have to use your calculator and we're solving in degrees for now. Later on, we'll change to radians. But when you use your calculator, please make sure that your calculator is in degrees. Once you do that, you can see my calculator here. It has the degree on the side. Once you're there, I'm gonna go to the calculation menu. Uh, it's gonna look different depending on what calculator you have, but you will have the regular sine, cosine, and tangent. On my case, I just have to hard press and go to the inverse sine. And then again, I'm doing the inverse sine of 12 over 13. 12 divided by 13. I'm gonna press enter and it will give me my angle measurement in degrees. So I know that my theta is equal to 67.38. Again, 67.38 degrees, because we're talking about an angle measurement. So every time you have a theta, make sure you have a angle measurement to go with it because we are talking about angles. For the second one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna name all three legs, figure out which two of I need, and then based on that, I will figure out which trig function goes with it. So looking at this, my right angle is here. Across from it, I will have my hypotenuse. So I'm gonna put that. I use abbreviations because it makes it a little bit easier. My theta is here at the bottom, right? Across from it, I will always have my opposite. That one is very easy to find. And then the one that is left, the one next to the angle, that is not the hypotenuse. So the angle is always between the adjacent and the hypotenuse. That's why I like putting the hypotenuse first, so I don't make mistakes. Now, I know I have the opposite side, which is six, and I have the adjacent side, which is eight. So now I'm going to go into my three of the three, three of the three trick functions and see which one will work. So which one of the three says opposite and adjacent? And that will be the one with a T or tangent. So I know that the tangent of the angle is equal to my opposite, which is six divided by my adjacent which is eight. You actually are able to simplify. It doesn't really help you much. You will still get the same answer. It does simplify to three over four. Uh, again, to get rid of the tangent, we have to do the inverse tangent on both sides. So inverse tangent of tangent of theta equals inverse tangent of three over four. Again, the inverse tangent and the tangent will cancel out, leaving you just a theta equals inverse tangent of three over four. So again, I'm gonna come here, inverse tangent of three divided by four, press enter. I know that my angle is around 36.87. And again, don't forget your degree sign because we are talking about an angle measurement. That will be my answer. So finding angles is pretty easy. You do have to set it up and then find the inverse of the of any of the three trig functions that you're working with. You can also use this to find sides. Same process. I'm gonna start by naming all the sides, right? And then I'm gonna focus on the two that I need, decide which of the three trig functions I'm gonna be using with it. And then solving. Uh, so I'm gonna write my shortcut at the top again. Right angles here, so across from it is my hypotenuse. My reference angle is here. They actually gave me the angle this time on this example is 32 degrees. Across from the 32, I'm gonna have my opposite and next to it my adjacent, right? So I know nothing about adjacent. I'm not looking for it, so I'm, I know that I'm not gonna use it. I only care about the opposite and the hypotenuse. One is the one that I need, and the other one is the one that they get, I have the measurement for. So which one of the three says opposite and hypotenuse? We look at the three of them. Is the one with the sine. Sine of 32 degrees, because now we actually have the measurement. Equals opposite, which is nine, 
divided by y. So now all I have to do is solve. The sine of 32 is actually a number. Uh, so in order for me to solve for y, I need to get y out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y. Once I do that, I get y sine of 32 equals 9. And I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 32. Cancel those out. I'm going to go to my calculator. And I'm just going to do 9 divided by the sine of 32. So 9 divided by the sine, regular sine of 32. Enter. Now I know that my side measures 16.98. I'm not going to put a degree symbol because I'm not talking about a measurement, about an angle, I'm talking about a side. So I'm just going to say units. If they do happen to give you meters feet, then it will be the same as the one with the opposite side. For the other one, I'm going to do the same thing. My right angle is here, so this will be my hypotenuse. Uh, this would be my opposite right across from the 22. And then this will be my adjacent. So now I'm going to do the same thing, right? I have adjacent and hypotenuse on it, so it will be the one with the cosine. So the cosine of theta, cosine of 22, because I do have the measurement, equals uh, adjacent, which is x, divided by hypotenuse, which is 20. Well, in this case, all I have to do is multiply both sides by 20 to make x be by itself. So x is equal to 20 times the cosine of 22. 20 times the cosine of 22 degrees. Press enter. I know my side measures 18.54 units. 